I think a common theme on this channel is cute animals being Satan serving humanity haunting pretty privileged merchants. And that's what this video is about and the further we go, the higher your chances of being turned full time horizontal. Before I do, I'm gonna just say this. When I call something a homicidal menace, that's not that's just me using hyperbole to season a sentence. I'm not actually trying to get y'all to go out and drop kick an otter or something. Ultimately, these animals are just trying to survive and are doing what comes naturally, so you can't really judge them by human moral standards, even though that's literally what I'm about to do. And starting off, this is not your average mouse. First of all, it's a straight up carnivore. In their defense, that's not exactly crazy. Squirrels have been known to raid nests and eat the baby birds inside. But no other rodent is more of a meat eater than the grasshopper mouse. And its grocery list can include anything from insects, worms, and spiders, to mantises, scorpions, and desert centipedes, aka the same cursed crawly that nearly unsubscribed Coyote Peterson from existence. Grasshopper mice will even murk and eat snakes. Basically, you remember that episode where Jerry took PEDs and nearly put Tom in a tombstone? That's the grasshopper mouse times a thousand. This mighty mouse even developed a resistance to the crippling venom of ops like the Arizona Bark Scorpion. Not only can they tank hits that would flatline animals 100 times their size, this rogue rodent shuts down the pathways the toxin takes to cause pain. Meaning, this mouse essentially evolved to be impervious to the pain caused by venom. It can feel pain, it's just not gonna come from a scorpion. That's not even the only thing about them. These mice stalk and hunt their prey exactly like cats. This homicidal hamster will even howl after catching a body to mark their territory. Take a listen. So imagine being a scorpion, right? Millions of years of evolution, your ancestors were apex predators, and you have biological warfare on your side. All that for a pint-sized mouse to be your downfall. Not even other mice are safe. Grasshopper mice regularly eat other rodents, and cannibalism is not off the table. In fact, there was a story of a scientist keeping a grasshopper mouse and making the mistake of leaving it alone with a lab rat five times its size. In the few minutes he walked away and returned, there was one less mouse and the number one suspect feeding on the carcass. Proof that even the most innocent looking platter can serve death. Especially since the predator with the highest body count is not what you'd expect. No other mammal catches more bodies than the Etruscan shrew. They're one of the smallest mammals alive and they weigh less than two skittles. The shrew is so small that the only way they can survive is by killing more prey than any other animal. Basically, if this candy sized carnivore doesn't eat twice its weight in food every day to fuel its metabolism, they'll essentially freeze to a flat line. So the Etruscan shrew has to end a life every two hours or so and they hunt by biting their prey through their head to disable it and then tearing it apart before another starving shrew can get to it. Just for reference, if I had to eat twice my weight in food every day, I'd be scarfing about 680 Big Macs every 24 hours. And even then, at least I don't have to hunt the burger. By the time I get to the drive through the job's already done. But the shrew does have a weapon, and it's being one of the very few mammals on Earth to weaponize venom. According to studies, some shrews are toxic enough to delete 200 mice, and while they're too small to turn a human to a hashtag, it's still capable of causing pain and allergic reactions. Not only that, but some shrews are able to catch a calorie come up underwater, since some are able to smell out prey even while being completely submerged. Yeah, they're a whole mint-sized menace, but too small to be a legit threat to us. That's not going to be true for some of the animals coming. And up next, this bird probably looks no different from something you'd expect in a garden. Except it's only found in the islands of the Galapagos, and to survive, they've come up with some nasty tricks. They've been nicknamed Darwin finches, since they actually helped prove Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Long story short, different finches ate different foods and so developed different size and shaped beaks. One finch evolved to finesse an easy meal by pecking at the skin of bigger birds and drinking the blood that spills out. Are birds even f***ing real? And scientists believe up to 10% of this flying leech's diet is seabird blood, and their favorite victim is a bird called the booby. Don't laugh, it's not funny. <coughs> it's not funny. Popular opinion says that it started with the finches picking parasites off the birds, but after realizing they could live off the marinara that would often leak out, the vampire finches started turning the birds into booby blood banks. They literally became everything they sought to destroy. And they're skilled enough to know how much damage to do to get a ragu reward without doing too much and losing a future victim. Yeah, these birds drink nothing but blood, which they kinda have to since freshwater in the Galapagos is in less supply than lawyers in heaven. But it also means that even though they can fly, Arab would be completely useless to them. But not to you, because Arab's flavor pods uses scent flavors to convince your brain you're drinking whatever pod you chose. Just fill up the bottle, pull the pod to activate, and drink your flavor. And that can be anything from blueberry to peach to cherry to cucumber. Or dirty pennies, you know, if you happen to be this finch. My personal favorite so far has been mango passion fruit, and you can't see it from here, but this is cherry. And remember, there's no calories, no sugar, just elite gray matter gaslight. Because fun fact, 80% of taste is actually dependent on smell. Which is great, because although I've never had a problem getting enough water, I personally have been trying to cut down on all the juices and sodas and stuff, and Arab's a great way of weaning yourself off without going full cold turkey. I've gotten a lot better at it now, but when I was just starting, Arup was the perfect failsafe. And if you think it would be for you, make sure you check out Arup and their assortment of flavor pods using the link in the description. Use the code CASGEO15 for 15% off. And like I always say,
Stay hydrated, my friends. It's just too bad finches don't drink water, otherwise Arab would save more boobies than free mammograms. Not only do they grief bosom birds, but finches will often roll eggs out of nests and crash them into rocks just for some easy protein. They're not even the only birds in that kind of timing. The New Zealand Kia will use that Swiss Army knife of a nose to cut into sheep and eat the fat right off their backs. And sometimes they freak the sheep out so much they yeet themselves off a cliff trying to get away. But at least the Kia and the vampire finch are only harmful to your mental. From here on out, that is the last time that statement will be true. Cause this live action plush toy is also on the short list of venomous mammals. The slow loris is a southeast asian primate armed with toxins that can do very real damage to a human. They have a gland on their arm that produces a chemical that becomes highly toxic when mixed with saliva. So when this imitation lemur sees you and puts its hands up, it's not a sign of surrender, it's a promise to ascend you. We talking straight soul eviction. In 2012, a biologist was bitten by a slow loris and this was him after one hour and this was buddy after an hour and a half. Since the toxins contain chemicals similar to cat allergens, this venom monkey can trigger anaphylactic shock in people, making it the first animal here that can perform landscape work on your family tree. We used to think this malicious muppet used venom against predators, but it turns out it's for friendly fire. They usually use it in fades with other lorises, and the flesh melting toxins can cause necrosis, meaning the loser loris can lose an eye, a toe, their scalp, and even part of their face. It's so bad that one of the most common causes of loris life retirements is getting bit by a rival. An eight year study done on about 80 slow lorises found that over 20% of them were seriously maimed in conflicts, with some missing eyes, ears, fingers, toes, and more. It's nasty work, and it puts the slow loris on the very short list of animals that use venom against their own kind. And it's no coincidence that one of the others is next. Two things about platypuses the public should know. One is that about six pounds and less than two feet long, they're way smaller than you think. And two is that they're violently venomous. Males have an ankle spur that they use in fights, and like the loris, the consequences of losing are incredibly painful. In 1991, Australian veteran Keith Payne was struck by a platypus, and in his own words, the immediate pain was far worse than getting struck by shrapnel. And it only got worse. The excruciating pain didn't go away after a month, even after he was shot up with morphine. And just how much pain are we talking? Well, according to him, just the weight of a warm towel on this thing caused incapacitating agony. Even 15 years after, he claimed to still be in discomfort, and this guy wasn't sweet or nothing. He actually earned the highest honor of the British Armed Forces for his performance in the Vietnam War. Same guy apparently got folded by a beaver otter cosplaying as a duck. And it's cause platypus venom manipulates nerve cells to trigger pain in a way that can have you down horrendous for weeks and not even enough morphine to roofie or rhino can bail you out. That's how you know Perry had love for the doof, he could've had a pharmacist every flavor of f***ed up if he wanted to. That's why if you see two male platypi fighting, you'll often see the loser spend days rolling around and scratching. That's a platypus in crippling agony, and you can expect the same symptoms if you f around and find out with the next animal, even though it's barely an inch long. Most people know why playing with a Portuguese man of war is bad for your health. You heard me say most. The man of war is notorious for excruciatingly painful stings that they inflict on thousands a year. Not only can it cause nasty welts like this, in worst case scenarios, it can trigger severe allergic reactions that can block your airways and suffocate you. Most people know not to touch them, but a lot of those same people would do this. This is Glaucus atlanticus, and more specifically, it's a tiny sea slug nudibranch. And what these boneless snails do is steal poison from other animals like anemones by eating them and storing the toxin in those weird fingertips growing out of their back. It's cultural appropriation, but with poison, and the glaucus does it to the man of war. Which is why even though a 2 inch glaucus is an overachiever, holding one and getting stung can lead to nausea, vomiting, allergic reactions, and you guessed it, pain. In fact, many think because the poison they steal is so concentrated, their sting is actually more powerful than the jellyfish understudy they take it from. Moral of the story, this is what it looks like to put a dent in your family's bloodline. Pro tip, if an animal's that small and goes out of its way to be seen, touching it's a great way to see your ancestors. I couldn't find a case of someone being seriously hurt by this tiny assault slug, so it's another example of an animal being too small to truly punish ignorance as often as they could. Completely different from the animal up next, cause real talk, if you haven't seen them in person, you would not believe how big they actually get. We all know Steve Irwin, may God rest his soul. And his son and shadow clone, Robert Irwin. Just like his father, Robert got the same animal lover's gene, but there is one animal he's terrified of, and you probably never guess it. According to him, the animal that scares him the most and has the most smoke for him, it's crazy, right? That's a wombat, and yeah, they really do get that big. And in the words of the spawn of khaki animal Jesus, crocodiles are apparently easier to work with than wombats, since wombats are bloodthirsty psychopaths. And while he probably was exaggerating a little, wombats still ain't the ones to play with. At 25 miles per hour, wombats are fast enough to catch a ticket in a school zone and more than fast enough Piss to catch off? you off guard. Oh. 
They have a tough cardless reinforced butt that they use to crush the skulls of their enemies against their burrows. Yeah, getting your life subscription terminated through twerking is a possibility if you're an op to a wombat. But more importantly, they have jaws more than capable of tearing chunks out of your ankles and cats, which is what these furry bowling balls usually go for. Victim Carrie Evans was hospitalized with over 20 bites and lacerations after she was mauled by the evil bulking twin of the quokka. And in 2020, a family nearly got squad wiped by a wombat after the one they were raising for a TV show turned on them, mauling his owner and handing out work to any kin that tried stepping in without prejudice. Buddy almost folded four generations of people and it took a whole axe to get him to act right. And that's not even mentioning the damage an angry fur meatball can do to your car. Moral of the story, if anyone in this man's bloodline don't rock with him, neither do I. The problem is, 99% of the population rocks with pandas and forgets it's still a bear that was made after the printer ran out of color. It's still a bear, and you can have a panda bear, a yogi bear, or nose candy bear. If it ends in a B-E-A-R, you'll be last seen in an E-R, if you even get that far. So fun fact, gorillas have a stronger bite force than grizzly bears and can crack a coconut, and that's because they spend so much of their time crushing vegetation. As bamboo merchants that commit 16 hours a day to binging it, giant pandas might have the most underrated bite in the entire animal kingdom. A study was done comparing the bite force of carnivores relative to their body size using a value known as the bite force quotient. African lions were given a bite force quotient of 124. The jaguar, believed to be pound for pound the strongest cat, earned a 137. And while being smaller than both, African painted dogs flexed a bone crushing 142. And where did giant pandas fall? With a BFQ of 151, giant pandas scored a bronze medal on the bite force scale, only behind the least weasel and an assault and battery happy looty tune. That's strong enough to rip flesh, tear tendons, and shatter bone. The thing is, pandas have all the tools of a predator, but with gerbil software. But even though this giant cow rabbit doesn't know how to kill, they can be persuaded into trying, and it's usually in zoos. In 2006, a wasted tourist had a chunk of his calf ripped off by a pissed off panda after he tried to pet it. In 2009, a tourist fell into an enclosure and also paid a calf tax. Later the same year, another tourist managed to fall into an enclosure and the barcode bear nearly turned him into a serial number on a police report, ripping off parts of his foot and elbow. And in 2015, Guan Huanxi sued the government and won for over $80,000. The reason was because officials had chased a giant panda onto his land and a generationally heated bear crushed Guan's leg like a celery stick. And my personal favorite story, a man tried wrestling a biracial black air force to impress a woman and appropriately got partially handled. He wasn't hurt, but the bear bodied him and even shredded his pants in the process, which was the closest he'd get to foreplay that entire day. It's no secret there's no end to the copious amounts of bull effery in the ocean, but there's still some animals people let slide especially if they've been in a movie. One of these fish can do you dirty, and this time the clown's not it. The regal blue tang is actually venomous, with caudal spines sharp enough to slice open skin, and when threatened, they'll whip their bodies from side to side. It's like a junkie waving a broken bottle at you, and the deep lacerations it can cause are almost guaranteed to get infected. And thanks to a certain Pixar movie, there's at least one kid out there that got a bacterial infection just because Ellen DeGeneres played a fish well. Not only that, but the blue tang is toxic to humans and can cause ciguatera poisoning to the people that eat it. An even worse mistake when people try it with the next animal, because the cute derp guppy is one of the most poisonous things alive. The tetrodotoxin in one pufferfish can bury 30 people. It's about 1200 times more toxic than cyanide, and there's no actual antidote. All that and Mrs. Puff's X is still considered a delicacy. The fugu blowfish is a prized dish in Japan, but it's also Russian roulette, because if the chef misses by even a tenth of an inch, it's the customer that gets cooked. Here's what would happen if you got poisoned. In about 10 minutes, your mouth would go numb and you would start to feel dizzy and unreasonably tired. You'd get an overwhelming headache to go with nausea and it'd slowly get harder and harder to breathe. Eventually, you'd get so exhausted you'd fall asleep and likely never wake up. And until then, you would have been conscious for everything, it's just that you'd be paralyzed and unable to talk or move. The only thing people could do to save you is pump your stomach, put you on life support, and God on speed dial. It's said that up to 100 people get flatlined by fugu a year, and most of that are people that try it at home. Which means by the time they realize they messed up, they can't run, call, or even scream for help. All they can do is struggle to get air and watch everything turn black like the end of Sopranos. But not even fish fentanyl has a higher body count than the last animal. A lot of people think snails are cute, yet snails are partially responsible for crossing 200,000 names off the census a year. Schistomyosis is a parasitic disease caused by worms with millions affected right now, and those worms are released by snails. The sickness is most common in tropical third world countries with limited access to clean fresh water. With about 700 million people living in at-risk areas, it's one of the most devastating parasitic diseases of all time, only second to malaria. And even if snails aren't the primary suspects, with them taxiing the bug, at the very least they're accomplices. Now you see why folks almost put Gary on a shirt, mad snail disease wasn't a joke. 
But that's gonna do it for this video. Be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent content as you wait for the next video. Check out my book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. You might just see some of the guys from today on there. If you'd like to further support this channel, becoming a patron on Patreon earns you access to exclusive content, videos before I post them, and you can even help vote on what I cover in future videos. Other than that, make sure you drink water, hug your parents. Yes, parents, we're inclusive now. And I'll see y'all in the next one. As long as y'all don't do something like this, P please don't. I right, peace out.